Hi friends, today we're in Luke chapter 1 verses 26 through 56. We're going to look at different ways that people respond when God asks them to do something big and which one are you? Hi friends, I'm Miss Nancy Ruth. And I'm Mr. Roger. We want to see kids living for Jesus. Okay, so in this passage we're talking about Mary and Joseph. Okay, Mary and Joseph were engaged. They were about to be married. And in ancient culture, um, an engagement was as binding as marriage itself. So they were already a couple very strongly um, promised and committed to each other. At that time, Mary was going about her everyday business. I like to think that she was baking <laughs> or doing you know, something like that. Or maybe she was um, out taking care of the livestock or the chickens or whatever. But she was in the middle of her everyday stuff um, by herself. And all of a sudden, an angel comes. An angel comes and says something to her. He says, greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. I don't know about you, but if an angel showed up and told me that, I'd be freaking out just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and Mary was too. Um, she said um, she was greatly troubled by his words and wondered what kind of greeting this could be. But the angel said to her, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid because God is going to do something special. In fact, God is going to give you a baby. You're going to have a baby and not just any baby. This baby will be called his, um, first of all, his name is going to be Jesus. And second, he will be where is it? Ha ha, found it. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom will never end. This is one special baby. All right. So then Mary says, how is this going to work? Because um, Mary, Joseph and I aren't married and we're not together that way yet. So, I mean, how is this going to work? I want you to notice something here. This is really important. Mary says, how will this be? Her relative, Zechariah, in a previous video, we looked at him. He said, I don't think so. How can I be sure of this? Because I'm an old man and my wife is well long in years. We're old. I don't see how this is going to work. Mary, though, she said, okay, I believe you. Now, how's this going to work? This is a very subtle difference, but it's so important. When God asks us to do something that we don't see how it's going to work, are we going to say, I don't think that's going to happen. You got to prove it to me. Or are we going to say, cool, I believe you. Now, how, how do I go about this? What, how is this going to work? Okay, that's very important difference to keep in mind as God asks us to do things. All right, let's keep going. So the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you and you will have a baby. Okay, and this um, baby to be born will be called the Son of God. All right, this is interesting because it's not Joseph's child. Jo Joseph was Jesus' adopted father. God himself is God's, is Jesus' father. All right, so then the baby, or the angel tells Mary that also her cousins, her cousin or her relative Elizabeth is also going to have a baby, even though she's old. Um, and I love this line. This is verse 37 of Luke 1. It says, for nothing is impossible with God. And I want you to really hear that. Because that same thing is true today. Nothing is impossible with God. And we see this firsthand in this account. All right, so let's see what happens next. So Mary goes, uh, first of all, Mary says, I am the Lord's servant. Her response to the angel's message, her response to what God wanted her to do was worship. I am the Lord's servant, she answered. May it be to me as you have said. And then the angel left her. That response of worship is key. It's not the Zachariah, oh, I don't know. You have to prove it to me. I don't see how this is going to work. Her response was worship and submission. That's what our response should be as well. Okay? Now, I want to get real for just a minute because sometimes God is going to ask us to do some hard things. All right? It might be something that's um, hard for us inside, like going to talk to somebody that we don't know really well just to say hi or to, to ask them how they're doing. It could be something big, like moving to a different city or even a different country. It could be something like um, giving up something that we hold tight to, giving up to our dreams and saying, God, whatever you want me to do, I want to do what glorifies you and what honors you. I want to do what you want. I don't 
I don't want to set the agenda because I'll get it wrong because we know God wants the best for us. And what he wants for us is the best. He has a reason for the things he does. So it could be a little thing or it could be a big thing. But when God asks you to do something, what is going to be your first response? Ah, you got to prove to me you want me to do that. Or, okay, how do you want me to do it? Now, I always have to stop when we have these kinds of discussions and, and say one thing. God is never, never, never going to ask you to do something that goes against what he said in the Bible. Because the Bible is God's word. And anything he asks you to do will be in alignment with that. So keep that in mind. And it's important to search the scriptures to see and know for sure if what God's asking you to do is biblical. But if it is, you don't have an excuse. You need to go ahead and do it, even if it's uncomfortable. And do it with a spirit of worship like Mary. Okay, so then Mary goes to visit Elizabeth, right? And when she shows up, she does like we do at our house. Hi, how you doing? She greeted Elizabeth. And Elizabeth said, oh my goodness, Mary, guess what just happened? When I heard your voice, the baby inside me leaped for joy. Oh my goodness. And then Elizabeth knows that this baby is something special that Mary is carrying. She says, blessed is she who has believed what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. And she said some other blessings in there too, but that's the main point I want you to hear. Mary believed that what God said was true. All right. And then there's uh, what's sometimes called the Magnificat in verses uh, 46 through 56. And it's Mary's song of praise and worship. It is such a wonderful thing. And I, I encourage you to read it. It's um, like I said, it's Matthew 1 verses 46 to 56 called the Magnificat. It's Mary's song of praise as a result of what God is doing in her life. I want us to think for a minute. What is God doing in your life right now? There may be some hard things going on, but what is going on in your life that you can praise God for right now? Let's take a moment and praise him together. Lord, thank you for the way you're working in our lives. Thank you that you are always with us. Thank you for Jesus. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining me today, friends. If you want to learn more about Zachariah and that encounter, make sure you check out this video. You also might like these other videos about the book of Luke. Or if you would like a family Bible study that goes along with these um, children's sermons or family moments, check out the QR code or check the link below to join the E-team. I love you, friends, and I'll see you next time. Bye.